because we'll head to the polls in the city's primary elections. But the fight to be the next Manhattan district attorney is in some ways uniquely consequential. For the last 45 years, 45 years, New York has only elected two different DAs, Robert Morgenthau in 1975 and Cyrus Vance in 2009, and both white men. But this year, the eight Democratic candidates vying for the role represent perhaps the most diverse field of applicants the job has ever had. And one of them particularly stands out. Born and raised in Brooklyn, Tahani Abushi is the child of Palestinian immigrants. And if elected, she would be a historic DA, the first woman and first Muslim to hold the office. Unlike most of the leading candidates, though, she's new to prosecution. Tahani's worked on the other side of the courtroom as a civil rights attorney, taking on more than two dozen cases through her firm. A personal experience took her down this route. When I was 14 years old, my father was sentenced to 22 years in prison. And when he was locked up, my whole family was doing the time. We are still paying the price that incarceration cost our family. My name is Tahani Abushi. I am running for Manhattan District Attorney because I understand the pain of our broken criminal justice system. I will fight to make sure no one else has to experience what my family went through. One of her most high-profile cases was against the NYPD, where she successfully defended Muslim women who were forced to remove their hijabs for mugshots taken during arrests. And then last year, the NYPD changed its policy to now allow all religious head coverings, not just hijabs, in most booking cases. Her platform today, like that of two other progressive candidates on the ticket, is to overhaul the criminal justice system, one she and her family know firsthand. She's looking to hold police accountable and hire fewer prosecutors, and instead staff the DA's office with more social workers, public defenders, and civil rights attorneys. It's a position that's not without pushback, but already she's got endorsements from the likes of Bernie Sanders and Rashida Tlaib, Cynthia Nixon, and yes, even Snoop Dogg. Manhattan's next top prosecutor will have no small task, Whoever wins will take office having to answer calls for more justice in policing, while at the same time overseeing a rise in violent crime. The next DA will also have to decide how to proceed with the current DA's ongoing investigation into former President Donald Trump's finances. So, how will Abushi's lack of experience as a prosecutor help her lead the prosecution team for the nation's biggest city? And what will her top priority be on day one? Joining me now to talk about her candidacy for Manhattan District Attorney is Tahani Abushi. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Uh, why should New Yorkers come out and vote for you as their next district attorney? You're not the only candidate calling for the reform of the criminal justice system. So what's unique about your candidacy? Well, Mahdi, if we want something different, we have to elect something different. And my work as a civil rights attorney has been focused on balancing the scales of justice. And that means building complex civil litigation cases that actually make systemic changes. And we've only ever had prosecutors in this office leading the office. And not only do we have high profile cases that we're going to be responsible for, but we need somebody that's going to actually address the racial disparities in our system, the over, over prosecution and incarceration of people of color in our city. And that was my job as a civil rights attorney, to see this issue from all sides, not just the prosecutor side, not the defense side, but how every single decision we make goes far beyond the four corners of that office, comes into our communities, and impacts every aspect of life. So we need somebody that both has the lived experience, but has also tackled this, side, this issue from many different sides. When you were a young girl, your father was found guilty on federal conspiracy charges and sentenced to 22 years uh, in prison. Uh, you've talked about how your father's long sentence greatly affected you and your family. How did that inspire you to do what you do now? Is your belief simply that he was wrongfully incarcerated? Or is it a broader point about the impact of imprisonment, the awful conditions in our prisons? You know, we grew up in a very tight-knit uh, family in a community that was heavily immigrant community. We had a small grocery store, walked to school, walked home, um, stocked shelves on the weekends, um, had family dinners, and after his incarceration, all of that ended, life as we knew it ended. And we had to move out of our homes and leave our childhood schools and find a way to start over. And that is an extremely destabilizing experience but one that, an experience that is shared by thousands of families across New York City. And so what inspired me to become an attorney is to understand the power structures in our city, to make sure that we have a system that is considering all communities when it talks about public safety, 
but also to make sure that we have an office that is independent and a checks and balance on the authority systems in our city. That's why I specifically wanted to go into civil rights work because I didn't just want to operate within the premise that we're told to operate, but to challenge them and see whether or not they're actually working to make life better for everyone in the city. So for you, how important is the current DA Cyrus Vance's investigation into Donald Trump's business dealings? Uh, where would continuing that investigation rank in terms of your priorities as DA? I think it will definitely be a priority. We're going to be inheriting a lot of different cases out of the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, and we have to elect somebody that is independent from that power structure that has neither rubbed elbows with Trump and his kind, uh, nor have they taken donations from Trump donors or people that might have appeared um, before the district attorney's office. This is a very sensitive case, one that a lot of people are um, looking to see what the resolution is, and we need somebody in there that won't buckle under the pressure to look the other way or to give a sweetheart deal. So we need independence and neutrality. Part of your proposal is to cut the number of prosecutors in the DA's office and to put social workers uh, and public defenders uh, and civil rights attorneys in instead. Some of your critics, including some other public defenders who, like you, oppose giving prosecutors more power, they say that, look, having social workers instead of attorneys on cases sounds nice, but it could affect people's right to have a counsel, and it might be a harmful approach in the long run. What is your response to them? I, that's not my policy, and so that's a misunderstanding. Um, what we're saying is when we talk about a public health approach, we need to have people from different disciplinary backgrounds to help us address it from a public health perspective. And so, of course, people not only have the right to remain silent, but you cannot speak to people who are represented by counsel, and we would never cross that line. But for our purposes, the district attorney's office, our prosecutors, our staff, when we're deciding alternatives to incarceration, when we're looking for a response for cases that are being charged or alternatives um, to things like restorative justice, we need to have those dis disciplinary practices at our disposal to help us make that decision. And that's where that perspective comes from. And do you have a position on funding or defunding the New York City Police Department? You know, um, it's an extremely important conversation. Historically, over the last several decades, crime has fallen in our city, although we see a spike in crime, not just in New York City, but across the country. But although crime has fallen, the budgets of both the NYPD and our prosecutor's office has grown exponentially, and we have no reason for it. And so we need to make sure we are reducing the budget of the NYPD to make room for alternatives, to ensure that we are doing more than just putting police at every corner when an agency fails, but to make sure we are funding community-based organizations, different city agencies, um, alternatives to policing to ensure that we are actually creating a safe place for all communities. Unlike other New York City races, the one for the DA will not be based on ranked choice voting, meaning whoever wins with whatever share of the vote wins. And you've been endorsed by some prominent right. Democrats, Bernie Sanders, Rashida Tlaib, uh, New York Congressman Jamal Bowman has also endorsed you. But Zephyr Teachout, a progressive herself, prominent New York attorney, ran for state AG and governor, as you know. She endorsed one of your leading opponents, Alvin Bragg, saying, you and other candidates who haven't been polling so high, you don't have a path to victory anymore. And that people should rally behind the progressive, the non-Wall Street candidate who can win, who happens to be Bragg. Why is she wrong? Well, because it's, uh, we do definitely have a path to victory, and you can see it across New York City and Manhattan for voters who are leaning our way and will be supporting us. But also, I think we can't be afraid to push the limits here and to try and fit a campaign like ours, a candidacy like mine, in a mold that she's used to fitting in is not going to work. And that's not why we ran. We need somebody that is not going to be afraid to hold police accountable, won't be afraid to go after Wall Street, is going to address racial disparities head on. And that's the experience that I have, and that's what I've done as a civil rights attorney. And we can't be afraid to do something different here. Um, so we have to be mindful of those who are just used to doing things the same old way and having the same old criticisms, and those that have been trailblazers to make things happen, to change the conversation and push the needle in a manner that actually does something for New Yorkers. And just to confirm, if you don't win the nomination next week, are you planning on running 
on the working families party ticket and challenging whoever the Democratic nominee is from the left, as the Wall Street Journal reported, because some would say, why should Democrats vote for a candidate next week who won't promise to back the eventual Democratic candidate? Yes, we are 100% focused on the primary. We've got five days until voting. We're in early voting now until June 20th. Election day is June 22nd. We are excited. We have a great option at winning, a great chance at winning. Um, we are telling everybody to get out there and vote. We're number six on the ballot, so lock it in. But you're not ruling out running for the Working Families Party there in your answer just now. Well, we're focused on the primary, so we need all hands on deck to make sure that we win and we won't have to answer that question. Intriguing. Tahani Abushi, good luck with the race. Thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. When we return, the secret to happiness unlocked with a former Harvard lecturer who focuses in the psychology of positivity and how that can